Hello everyone, my name is Cliff and welcome back to my channel, Cliff's Dark Gems. Today I'm going to be talking about all the books I read in the month of January. managed eight out of the ten books uh, that I suggested that I was going to read this month and that actually got me reflecting a little bit on my reading habits. This is my first month as a booktuber and I just thought really it's important that we think about why we read. Is it because we're racing through to get as many books as we can or are we reading for enjoyment and that's what it should be all about and I worry because I look on Goodreads, I look at some booktubers, um, not all of them, and yeah, some of them read really quickly, and there's no problem with that. But many of us, I read fairly quickly myself, but many of us it's a little bit of a slow pace, and a bit more of a slog to get through a book. And if you find a book that you really love, and that you want to get through and enjoy it, I would advise not rushing through to try and get to your next book. Just take your time, let the story sink in. Um, that is much more important than trying to get through 10 books or 20 books a month. I think a lot of people find a bit of a strain, a bit of a stress to do that. Um, so that's what I have to say about that. First book I did not get to this month, and it's going straight to my TBR for next month, is Major Dick Winters and Beyond Band of Brothers. Now, as I said in previous videos, I love the miniseries Band of Brothers. I think it is probably my best miniseries of all time. Um, and I would love to get the account of the main character on the true story behind it, that miniseries. The second short story collection that I just dipped my toes in this month is Robert McCammon, Blue World. I I don't think it's going to be of the same quality as his longer novels like Swan Song and Boy's Life but I'm looking forward to reading a lot more of this next month as well. The rest of the novels I will be counting down from 8 to 1 and they range from 3 star reads all the way to 5 star reads. Sadly my first 3 star read for the month and it was very disappointing for me because I went in with very high expectations um, based on other people's reviews and what people have been talking about and that is The Truth by Nick Cutter. Now, it's not that it was a bad book, um, it was actually an enjoyable story but I found it just the gore and the violence and the gratuitous nature of the body horror I found it to be repetitive and it got to the point where my eyes just glazed over. I don't mind gore but I would rather have it as a surprise, sort of placed in the novel where you least expect it, where, wow, what just hit me. Uh, but I found that the writer used it all the time, um, with the animal torture, with the, the body horror, to the point where I just didn't care so much anymore. I also found that his character development was not as well done as I would have hoped. And that got me thinking, if I think about all the books and novels that are my favourite, that stand out for me, that are great, incredible books that I've read in my lifetime, the one thing that stands out is that the characterisation is spot on. You care about the characters, you get invested in the characters. And this just didn't happen for the troop. Um, and you kind of don't really care what happens to them. And it's almost like you know what's going to happen to them, but it's just bring on the next character, bring on the next character. The, perhaps the most disappointing aspect of the book for me was that it did not terrify me. I want to be terrified in my, in my reading. If I'm reading a horror novel, I want those scares to actually chill you to the bone. This did not do it for me. Yes, there was gore, there was horror. There were, were some scary pieces. It was a pretty good book. And that's why it's three stars, but it didn't do what I expected it to do for me. Okay, and the next disappointment for this month for me was 
Handling the Undead by John Lindquist, the Swedish author. Now, I've had a very interesting premise uh, that the dead rise up in Stockholm. Um, they actually dig them up out of their graves. They rise up out of the morgue. And they're not the flesh-eating, brain-chewing, walking dead uh, kind of zombies that we, we, we expect and we're used to. Instead, they are <laughs> mindless, harmless, and they're just kind of there. And they just want to go home. One interesting thing is that perhaps they have a little bit of telekinetic ability, but they're just shambling corpses. And the government tries to take care of the problem. Like, what are we going to do with these people? Uh, well, these carry up the people that are carrying on living even though they're dead. What are we going to do with them? And they make some very bad decisions in this novel. The government tries to find out what's going on with these creatures. Uh, they do tests on them, they lock them away, they hide them away from the people and this actually pisses off the population because they want to know, they want to get in touch with these lost relatives. Uh, some of the families try to hide their, whether it's their mothers or grandmothers or sons, they try to hide them away and uh, the army comes up after them looking, you know, searching houses, trying to get round up the whole undead so they can try and make a make sense of the problem. Look, it's a fairly decent story and it deals with themes like love, loss, grief and there are some touching moments. My biggest problem with the story is that I don't think it, Linkus knew what he wanted to do with it. Is it a horror novel? Is it something completely different? And the last 80 pages or so just didn't, they were exciting, thrilling, but they didn't make any sense. It's almost like he just tacked it on to finish the book. Um, the resolution I did not enjoy it and it just could have been so much more uh, if I think about Let the Right One In. It is one of my favourite novels of all time. He just did not hit the mark this time. But I'll definitely read some more of his novels in the future. Okay, at number six we have The Con Man by Ed McBain. Now for me this is probably the, my least favourite book in the 87th Precinct series but I still enjoyed it. it has wonderful writing, great storytelling, uh, the characters are developed. I'm just really, really enjoying this series. This deals with two separate cases. Uh, first of all, there's a con man, it's out swindling, um, basically getting money from unwary tourists and unwary citizens, and then there's a murder mystery. Uh, a woman's body floats up, and she's actually called the floater, that's what the police call them, and they try to get the bottom, to the bottom of this murder. Now, the actual conning of people out of their hard-earned cash, I didn't care for as much. The descriptions were a little bit tedious, but the murder mystery was fantastic. And the ending of the story was absolutely awesome. So, look, this is a fantastic series. And just because it's my least favorite so far, uh, it's still a very good read. The next book that I mentioned in an earlier video was Charnel House by Graham Masterson. And I did mention that I really, really enjoyed this book. Uh, there were some very fun, scary set pieces. However, it is not well written. Uh, and it is kind of corny. And this is early Masterson. I think it's his third book and I mentioned that earlier as well. And I'm sure that if you give him a go later on in his career, uh, he's got a, quite a substantial body of work. I'm sure his style matures. I know that The Mirror, I mentioned that, it's a fantastic book. Uh, but this, it, this is him early in his career and I think that shows. But still a fun read. At number four we have Joe R. Lansdale, Savage Season. Uh, now this is my first four star read for the month. Uh, it is a fantastic story, a lot of fun. Uh, it deals with Hap, who is white, straight. He is an uh, ex-hippie and he dodged the Vietnam draft and spent a year in prison and his best buddy is Leonard who is black and gay and a hectic mean son of a bitch he's a Vietnam War veteran and they form this unlikely friendship and I'm really looking forward to more, reading more of the series uh, mainly because of these two these two buddies their banter between the two of them is hilarious uh, it's, it's a touching friendship as well um, but there's just a lot of fun and the story, obviously, I mentioned earlier, deals with uh, greed, 
uh, there's double crossing, there's backstabbing, and things go horribly, horribly wrong. Uh, I really enjoyed this book. And at number three, we have The Pusher by Ed McBain. Now, this is possibly my favorite story by this author so far. It is incredibly well written. There are twists and turns. The prose is just superb. Uh, the attention to detail with the, with the setting, with the characters, they are either, either incredibly likable or you just can't stand them. Uh, but the story is so exciting. And you never know what's going to happen. It's just twists and turns everywhere. And it seems that as soon as the police are closer to solving the case, something just gets in the way and stops him from moving forward in the case. And he just keeps you on the edge of, edge of your seat with the story. It's about a patrolman out on patrol and he actually finds this dead body. Now the dead body is riddled with heroin, so it could be an overdose, but there's a rope around his neck. He's not hanging from the roof, it's rather, he's like, like this. Um, people don't know if it is a homicide or a suicide, at first they suspect suicide, um, but really just start asking these questions. Who is a murderer? Who is the drug pusher? And it is a fabulous story. I really, really enjoyed this. Four stars. Right, number two, we have Stephen King's 112263. Uh, now, I have spoken about this novel already, and it is absolutely magical. Uh, I gave it four stars. I don't think that does it justice. I'm going to have to push this up to five stars. I know it drags in a few places, maybe in the middle, but the rest of it is just so superb that it has to be five stars. Um, it is exciting, touching, thrilling. There's just so many emotions. This was an emotional roller coaster reading this book, and I cannot recommend it enough. This novel also proves to me that Stephen King can't just be put in a box and labeled as a horror author. This book proves that he can write literary fiction, he can write pretty much anything. He's just a masterful storyteller. And as I said, I cannot recommend this book enough. And for somebody that is perhaps new to Stephen King, that is a little bit wary of dipping their toes into horror, I actually think, as long as this book is, that this might be a good place to start. Dan Simmons' The Terror. Uh, what more can I say about this novel that I not, did not talk about in my reading update? It is just fantastic. It chilled me to the bone. No pun intended. I found myself on the ice with those crewmen uh, trudging along on the ice to an uncertain future. It is harrowing. It is an absolute must for anyone who wants to read horror. I actually found this so disturbing and harrowing that it has leapt into my top 10 horror novels of all time. Uh, I cannot recommend this enough. As I said before, it is a long, long book. You're looking at yeah, way over 900 pages, uh, and I think this is perhaps the reason why I didn't get through my, my TBR this month, but I don't care. This actually, on its own, was worth my reading for this month. Uh, highly, highly recommended. The Terror. Uh, so there we go everyone, that's my reading for uh, January, done and dusted. Uh, please stay tuned, I think tomorrow I'm going to get my TBR for February, and if you have any comments, Leave them in, this, in the comment section below. I haven't done any in-depth uh, book reviews yet. I think I plan to do one with the Terror at some stage. But if there's any other books that you'd like to know more about, or you would like to hear me speak about, please let me know in the comments below. And be sure to like and subscribe, and keep those pages turning. Cheers.